Oh, wow. Thank you very much. That is so kind of you. My name is Gene. I'm very excited to be here. I'm excited, but I'm also a little bit bummed, okay? Because, as you know, Mother's Day is next week, right? I had this great idea. I was going to surprise my mom with a brand new dress from Dillard's. But they didn't have my size. <laughs> Don't you hate that, fellas? It's the worst. I went to school here for many years. I uh, went to graduate school here, too. I taught public speaking while I was in graduate school. Are there any teachers in the audience? Yeah. Okay, how about students? Yeah. Okay, good. This isn't always so weird. And you see a teacher outside of class, you know, like at Walmart or through their bedroom window at night while you're jacking off. Oh, why is this so weird? <laughs> Another thing is weird with all these people here tonight. This is really incredible. We never had any kind of fan base when I was in LTS. We weren't that popular. Sad to say. Although I did get recognized on campus one time. It was right here in the Union, in fact. This short little blonde girl, she's real cute. And I'll never forget what she said to me. She walked right up to me, looked me square in the eyes, and she said, Get the fuck out of the women's bathroom, you pervert! <laughs> she's a little bathroom cutie, you guys. A little baño bonita. <laughs> was she Spanish? Who knows? I, I like to think so. But uh, anyway, like I said, I taught public speaking here for a little bit. Anytime guys hear that, they always ask the same question. Did you fuck one of your students? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't, bro. My office was a Kimball, not the set of a Brazzers video. <laughs> I know teacher films are real popular on Pornhub these days, but uh, they're not documentaries. <laughs> Sad to say. <laughs> And that's another thing, um, speaking of Pornhub, HD should not be considered its own category of porn. What kind of monster thinks screen resolution sufficiently narrows the search results? You have any idea the Pandora's box you're about to open just because you want 1080p? If you're not careful, you're more likely to get 1080 penises. So no, I never slept with my students. I'm not saying that that kind of thing doesn't happen. I'm sure there are plenty of teachers who would gladly trade sex for grades. Oh, you'll get an A, but first you gotta take the D. <laughs> and public speaking, you know, it, just, it doesn't have the sex appeal. Maybe a class like criminal defense? Sure, that whole course is about getting people off. <laughs> oh, bro, bro. <laughs> And even if I did hook up with one of my students, they probably wouldn't have enjoyed it anyway, because I've heard that having sex with me is a lot like playing hide-and-go-seek. Because you count to ten, and ready or not, here I come. <laughs> yeah, I never hooked up with any of my students. Bathroom chick didn't work out, but you know what? It doesn't bother me. Because I've always known that no matter what, at the end of the day, one day, I will give my heart to someone. And that's why I'm an organ donor. <laughs> and my organs are in great shape, too. I went to regular checkups. Even in college. I didn't go to Pat Walker. I went to a real doctor. <laughs> I remember I had an appointment at Pat Walker one time. Oh, God. They made me take my pants off and bend over. It was super uncomfortable. Especially since I was just there for an eye exam. <laughs> The guy was filming me the whole time, too. I put my fingers in his mouth. It's pretty fucked up. Actually, it wasn't Pat Walker. It was, uh, it was more like a rusty old tool shed. Huh. But anyway, I'm just... Uh, <laughs> it didn't land the way I thought it would. I do miss, uh, I do miss teaching, and I, I miss my time here. But there's certainly a lot of things uh, that I don't miss, like... Uh, Taking a shit on campus? Is there anything more humiliating than that? Oh great, I've got 10 minutes on my next class and I've got Hurricane Katrina brewing in my bowels. I'm pretty sure the levee's gonna break on this one. And we all act like public bathroom stalls provide any kind of privacy. It's like, we can all see your shoes, Becca. No one wears Uggs anymore. Oh, that's so ratchet. Guys, Becca's taking a shit! What is she thinking? Better question, what am I 
doing once again in the women's bathroom. <laughs> I uh, also don't miss finals, the hellish nightmare you're all about to go through in a few days. Yeah, no thank you. The one good thing about finals is all the Adderall you get to enjoy, am I right? Oh, it's the best. It's the one time in your life you get to pop a bunch of pills and nobody calls you a druggie. It's like, excuse me, officer, uh, I'm not a method piece of shit, okay? I'm a college student. Get your fucking hands off me. I remember the first time I learned what Adderall was, uh, was right here on campus. I was in Mullins Library, freshman year, on a weeknight. I was there for SAE Study Hall, and I had my pledge brother Tanner on my left, my other pledge brother Clint on my right. And Tanner put some pills on the counter. He says, hey Gene, do you want to take some Adderall? Clint says, whoa man, you gotta be careful. That's a Schedule II controlled substance. If you get caught with it, it's a felony. It can cause increased blood pressure, heart palpitations, insomnia, and even psychosis. Tanner says, yeah, but you'll feel fucking great. <laughs> so, I took it. <laughs> and about 45 minutes later, I was out in front of the library, shame smoking like a fucking freight train. I went through like a pack and a half of Parliament Lights in an hour. I felt incredible. And then, the next day, I took some more, and I went to history class. Now look. I like history just as much as the next guy. It's not my favorite subject in the world, but I've seen National Treasure 1 and 2. Great films. <laughs> but I went to class that day, jacked out of my mind, and as fate and the Founding Fathers would have it, the subject was the Declaration of Independence. And I remember sitting in the front row, being completely enthralled with every word coming out of her mouth. It was the most interesting shit I had ever heard in my entire life. And I didn't want it to stop. Oh my god, tell me more about Thomas Jefferson and his big ass quill pen. Oh. And, okay, and when it ended, I was devastated. So when they say, don't do drugs, I'm pretty sure they're not talking about Adderall. Because Adderall is great. And it's everywhere nowadays, isn't it? They were popping like Skittles backstage. It was unbelievable. I said, guys, you can't take all that Adderall before the show. And they said, well, why not? And I said, because I want some. Give me some of that. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, that's my time. Thank you very much. You ready to start the show? Okay. Tonight is a special night for four members of Lab Track and Field. It is their final performance here at the University of Arkansas. So if you would please, let's respect them and honor them the way they so justly deserve. Please welcome to the stage a man that I met right outside the women's bathroom, the hilarious Mr. Jake Rowland, ladies and gentlemen. Keep it going. Oh yeah, this is real. Keep it going for the very funny Mr. Mark Callan. Gentlemen. And here we go, say hello to the very talented Mr. Matt Matney, ladies and gentlemen. One more time for all our performers. Good luck tonight, fellas. No pressure. Hey, what do you say? We welcome out the rest of the gang. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your friends and mine. Live. I'm so looking forward to this show. Uh, thanks so much to Gene. That was pretty great, right? Uh, give a round of applause to Gene. If you liked Gene, I've got a treat for you. More Gene coming up right now. I need Caroline, Gene, Martin, and I need uh, uh, Jake uh, to do a game called Dovey. Uh, if you've never seen Live Track and Field before, we, we do improv comedy here. We're making it all up on the spot. I'm making this up on the spot. You probably can't even tell. <laughs> this sounds like a rehearsed speech. I'm running for president. All right. I could probably win this year. All right, so here's what I'm doing. 
<laughs> Here's what's going to happen, guys. Uh, Gene and Caroline are doing a scene together. They can't ever speak with their mouths. What's going to happen is Martin's going to do all the dialogue for Caroline. Jake's going to do all the dialogue for Gene. It's going to be lots of fun. Can I get, like, a, uh, maybe a place where these two can work together? Disney World. The uh, working together at Disney World. Uh, take it away, Gene and Caroline. <laughs> God. Dad, what, you go, you go, you go. I'm so sorry. I'm, Derek, no. Derek, I'm not gonna. You're the best goofy around. I mean, I'm your understudy. I'm not gonna talk before you. Okay, well, that means a lot, Minnie. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry, I get nervous around good goofies. I, <laughs> um, I, I will have to say, though, please never refer to me by my dumb birth name ever again. When I'm in this outfit, I am goofy and goofy only. So, uh, Minnie, I just kind of noticed that you tried to use a name that doesn't really apply to me right now. And so, if you could just shut the fuck up with all that. <laughs> Right, right, I can't even, right, 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 right,
good time so far? <laughs> that was weak at best. So, um, okay. So, um, I'm actually here because I'm introducing, we actually are going to be doing a new form of improv tonight for you guys. So we're gonna be trying something new. Um, this is actually called Gravid Water. Um, so this actually combines actors and improv artists. So we've actually invited um, an actress from the theater department, Ms. Emily Riggs. Uh, she has memorized scenes for a, a scene, like a play, like she would for a play. Um, and so she's going to be performing those lines from the play. Um, she's going to be performing with Tucker, uh, and Tucker actually doesn't know any of the lines for the play. <laughs> and not only does he not know the lines, ladies and gentlemen, he doesn't know the name of the play, the character names, what their relationship is, the genre. He knows absolutely nothing. So, our actress, Emily, she is going to have to continue with her lines in order. She cannot switch them. She has to say whatever line is next, no matter what happens. And uh, Tucker's just along for the ride. So, uh, so, Emily, please welcome Emily and Tucker to the stage. And uh, we are happy to present, for the first time ever, Grab and Water. Of course, I have impeccable hearing. <laughs> no, I, I did hear. Hello? Outside? Yeah, outside. They're building barricades. That's, you know, Donald Trump's wall. <laughs> Here on our streets? Look, we live on the border of Texas and Mexico. <laughs> this is gonna happen. For an hour, at least. Yeah, well, it's been a couple days, actually. <laughs> Big wall, you know? No, he, he, well, he's gone from here. He struck the ground and then went to the White House. <laughs> he knew that you would try to stop him, so he left as soon as it started. I know, and I am very intimidating. <laughs> scared him right off. <laughs> Are you afraid? <laughs> <laughs> Cripplingly so. <laughs> No, they're, they're, they're out there building. <laughs> this sounds so harmonious and <laughs> so resonant. It's, well, you... like, it's like being in a forest or on a river when you're building a boat or mending a dam. It's so peaceful. They're chopping down forests in rivers. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I knew you would. Oh, you knew I would? Of go... course. Oh, yeah, I'll go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And the children? Yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> they don't even like Trump. <laughs> can I? Can I? Yeah, you're just, I, ever since I met you at that Trump rally, I knew you were. Like this happens once every, what, 100,000 years? Yeah, you're right. Getting together with a Trump supporter only happens once every 100,000 years. <laughs> I'm not afraid. <laughs> you can't like to reiterate that I am very afraid. <laughs> Yes, the wall is bigger than this. I'm trying to keep people out. So what if they do die if it's for the cause? Well, little children. Little Bobby and Susie. Die the children.
Jacob was finally alone with his DVD. <laughs> no one will take this from me, he thought. Indeed, he screamed to the night sky. This is my DVD. I have earned it through violence this very night. Outside his window, who should lurk besides Bobby and Throbby? <laughs> ah! They're here for my DVDs, but they have no idea what booby traps I have set up. <laughs> Bobby and Throbby, upon activating the first tripwire after hopping through the window in a fun fashion, <laughs> Pointing at many books. <laughs> hey, is that the insert for the three disc copy of Highlander you got there? Said Bobby. Yeah, said Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 oh, no, no, you're mistaken. I was, uh, no, I, I was, uh, uh, yeah, I have that on VHS. Do, 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 do you want my VHS? He said, do you want my VHS? Uh, Bobby said, <laughs> no, no, I do not want your VHS. I want the VHS. start their scene over again with the last words or phrase that the group before them was using. It's a lot of fun. Uh, can I get maybe a, uh, a historical event that these two could do? Battle so, Gettysburg. Gettysburg, okay. <laughs> you guys can battle Gettysburg. Uh, can I get a, um, a character relationship for these two? Harry Potter and Hermione. <laughs> Harry Potter and who? Hermione. Okay. Three lovers. Yeah, yeah, those lovers do help. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Harry Potter and Hermione. Uh, <laughs> And can I get like a, uh, maybe like a strange text message that somebody sent me earlier today? What's a weird message somebody sent you earlier today? Just the letter K. No, it's gonna be really muddy. Oh, it's. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be really muddy. Alright, let's run it down. Yes, uh, Harry Potter and Mighty. Have you, have you read Harry Potter? Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, it's it's going to be real muddy. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, take it away. It's going to be really muddy. So I booked us this trip for a cruise next weekend. It was an excursion. We got 50% off. It was great. And I'm going to tell you. Yeah. It's going to be real muddy. <laughs> mud. Muddy like mud, like, like. Mud, like wet dirt, like mud. <laughs> like it just rained, we're going to a waterfall. We're gonna get a little spa day. We're getting mud masks. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be romantic. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm with, I think I can. You know, I can get my nails done and everything. I think it'll be. I think it'll be great. You know, how, how much did it cost? How much was the? Um, <clears throat> you wanna know? <laughs> it, yeah. I kind of. I don't want to take away from the romance. Yeah. <laughs> 
to Gettysburg yes. to tell me this is a romantic vacation now. That now you didn't even tell me that before. Yes, sir. And it's and it's because it's at Gettysburg. I just want to make that all clear. This is what I'm here for. What's so hard to understand about that? Yeah, I'm not, I don't understand what's so hard. To understand. <laughs> really, you just do it. It's just it's just the one and day. <laughs> all we have to do then he who shall not be named, and he's gone. Well then do it, Abby. We're waiting on you, the chosen one. Listen, you know we have to stretch this out for at least multiple franchises. <laughs> <laughs> if, I just, if I just go and kill him, it's all over. <laughs> I have to pay for calling. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Abby, have you studied once while you were in school? Once? I think I have. <laughs> I know you have, because you're very smart. I am. <laughs> yes, that much I can say. Wingardium Leviosa. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm talking about, all right? So I'll keep you around. That's really good. Okay, so that one just makes him, what does that make him do? Float. Makes him, he's going to float away. You better hold it out. You might as well just lift him up a bit. <laughs> If we're going to do water, where's he going? <laughs> He's going to send him up into the atmosphere. He's going to land in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> so we'll Harry Potter there. <laughs> really hot. Let's just keep him here. Okay. But raise him from the ground. <laughs> okay. We're going to hold him up there. Okay. For the next five books. And then, we'll, and then when he starts to, when he's like, hey, I want down, we'll be like, no. <laughs> I want down. We're like, no, sorry, I'm gonna give you money that I don't. Are you sure you want to know? <laughs> Remember the 50% off thing. Remember this is a romantic gesture at right. our one month anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> We're going on a cruise to the Caribbean and it was $537 with taxes and the international fee. $537? Five, five, $537, but it was 50 second part of that. And our featured actor is going to be played by actress Allegra. Please come on. This is Allegra. She's wonderful.
action right now justifies. <laughs> again, but they're going to have to put their own twist on it because they don't know what's happening. And I got to say, while their headphones are in, they're real dopes. So just like give them a little bit of a break. Um, can I get a suggestion for something you would do on a first date, something fun? A game bag. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Go out to eat. Go out to eat. Pop, pop, pop. Pop, pop, pop. I heard a lot of pop, pop. Let's see pop, pop. <laughs> Yeah, please. 
kind of like that. <laughs> we got one more game for you with Gene Nelson. Give it up for him one more time. He's back, and he's joined by Martin. No, so sorry. He's joined by Jake uh, Lewis. Sucker to remember who everybody is in between all these. Uh, Hazel Chow will be here. <laughs> and it wouldn't be a real uh, proper LTF dating game if Tucker Parton wasn't out here as well. <laughs> we haven't done this one in quite a while, but some of you guys might remember it. Here's how this is going to work uh, Hazel here, he's looking for love. Aren't we all? Yeah, he's great. Uh, these people, maybe not so great. We'll see. Uh, they're going to be uh, people that uh, that are uh, famous figures and uh, pop culture fiction that are really out here. Uh, Hanson is going to be trying to figure out who they are, but he's not going to have any idea who they are. He's putting uh, he's putting Margarita Bill in his ears just like we did. <laughs> but yeah, I need uh, from you guys. I need people. These guys can be. It can be someone who's uh, famous in pop culture, like a public figure of some kind, or it can be. Take me on a second date. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, 
probably go to like the library or something, you know, I like to study a lot. I'm working on some PhDs. I usually sleep in class though, but uh, I don't know, probably the library. It just depends on how much time we have, you know, if it's like all day or like 127 hours, it really doesn't matter to me. <laughs> yeah. All right, contestant number three. <laughs> My dad owns Fanchon. <laughs> Have you ever been there? <laughs> and also, how many dates in until we go to Fan Chill? <laughs> well, let me tell you, it's gonna be a little easier for me to get you to Fan Chill than these two. <laughs> I can say that Fan Chill is a very nice place, and I say I could take you there on the first date, buddy. <laughs> I'll run you right there. Why we? Why will? <laughs> All right, contestant number one. You said that you used to own white people. Whoa! <laughs> it's really interesting because my dad owns Fanch. <laughs> what would you say your favorite drink is? <laughs> well, maybe uh, some sort of citrus based beverage. Uh, <laughs> Press kumquat or an orange juice. I like Natty Lights. <laughs> oh, and lemonade because the crowd really wants me to say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, contestant number two. My mom's an empowered woman and does a lot of own things on her own time, but she will never tell me about them. <laughs> With your mom. <laughs> my mom is amazing. We get along so good in my family. Me, my brother Dave, we just, we're all so tight, you know? So as long as we can hang out, you, me, my mom, whatever, it's Mother's Day coming up, not a big deal. I have a few brothers named Dave as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, me too. <laughs> Yeah, true story, man. Oh. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Contestant number three. My study is business, but I'm also political science, but I don't know life. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, I've been building men here for a while. <laughs> and let me tell you, I just, you gotta, yeah, I'll tell you what my goal is. It's to spill the blood of my enemies. It's to run uh, wild and uh, find whatever's borderline erotic and chase that. <laughs> Sounds like one hell of a hell week. <laughs> That's our last round. Unless we do one more, like a super semester. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I have the last question of, if you were to take me to any stadium in the world to watch a football game, which one would it be? Well. <laughs> Lady man of sports, I would take you to the Ra Razorback Stadium. That's real stadium. That's uh, but while we're there, keeping it local. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what your father owns. But absolutely. But I, I just want to say I don't think it's about the stadium. You know, uh, material things. I keep them on the bottom. I really like to put love on top. <laughs> I think it's yeah. <laughs> It's a great reference. I think material. <laughs> Contestant number two. It was 420 just a little bit ago. <laughs> oh, God, I know it. <laughs> and I, like contestant number one, own white people. <laughs> kind of like Seth Rogen. There's, I'm going somewhere with this. Talk to me about Seth Rogen. <laughs> one of my favorite people of all time, man. The coolest fucking dude I've ever had the pleasure of working with, okay? One of my best friends. I mean, he's no Toby Maguire, let's just say that. Okay. <laughs> One of my best friends. If I could go anywhere with Seth, probably be to the great, wonderful land of Oz. 
<laughs> yeah. What do you want to say about that? What do you want me to say? I don't know what else to say. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is a, this is a good little like interview session we've got going on. Yeah. Contestant number three. Um, one time, my dad bought me a pony. What would you buy me? <laughs> Well, seeing as, you know, I make a lot of money, I'd probably go, uh, I'd go bigger than a pony. Get you a plane so we could go hop on the white, I mean the plane, a plane, <laughs> hop on the plane. And, uh, yeah, and that's, that's it. You would just buy me a plane? I'd buy you a plane. And we would never come down? Never. And we would stay in the sky forever? Forever. And we would elope in the sky forever? Forever. And we would keep eloping? Elope. <laughs> All right, that sounds like it's time for me to do my part again. Uh, Matthew, tell me this. Who are you not going home with tonight? Well, love is hard. <laughs> You're not wrong. Your dad owns Fayette Chill. <laughs> How do you know that? Everybody knows that, Matthew. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and because of that, I don't need to watch a lot of movies. Bye, James Franco! Bye, oh. James Franco! Oh. Not cool! <laughs> Who else are you not going home with, Matthew? And because of that politically charged statement at the beginning, you know, I was like, whoa. <laughs> I'm going to have to say, Although I may regret it, <laughs> I cannot go home with you, Queen Beyonce. Is that right? Yeah! I don't think that's accurate. Trust yourself, Matthew. You know what she looks like. I do too. And then that leaves me with a loping through the sky forever and ever with the man whose name I promise you I know. <laughs> and it's probably political. A rich man <laughs> who I'm gonna go home with. And he, oh, I get to go home with Brett Bieler. <laughs> that was real joy in his face there. <laughs> Uh, we have one more thing for you here tonight. We're going to end the show as we always do with a little bit of long form. Uh, we're excited about doing this particular style. And if you ever go watch an improv show, you've probably seen this before. It's the most classic, uh, the most pure, the most beautiful form of long form. It's called the Herald. It's going to be really great. Can I get everybody out for a Herald? <laughs> so much energy. I love it. <laughs> this is going to be great. <laughs> Yeah. 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 That's all we're gonna do. <laughs> Can I get a, uh, a a suggestion for maybe your favorite or your least favorite like subject in school? Yeah. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Biology. Uh, definitely hear biology really loud. Anybody have a biology story? I poisoned a bunch of people once. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, in high school, I, uh, I was part of all the cool kids who like uh, tried their best to uh, cheat on everything. <laughs> and uh, so a big part of that was uh, whenever we had to do experiments for biology was like making sure that you didn't, um, you just falsified your data basically. Um, and so I didn't really do my research for what I was supposed to be doing. Um, and I ended up just putting a bunch of shit in an oven forever. <laughs> and then uh, the fumes uh, made a lot of people really happy with me after that. Uh, wrote the paper the night before and got an A. <laughs> uh, when I think of putting a bunch of things in an oven forever, uh, I think of the time that I went to, uh, I went to grab Chick-fil-A with some of my friends, you know, right here on campus. Got my bag of Chick-fil-A, and we decided we were going to go home and eat it back at home. And I got home, and my sandwich was kind of cold. And I thought to myself, okay, well, one thing I could probably do is warm this up, and then it would be good. So I just put my sandwich in the microwave with the, uh, the bag it comes in. Because, <laughs> guys, it's totally okay. You can do that because you can put paper in a microwave. It's no big deal. 
Um, there's aluminum in that. Uh, it's metal. The microwave caught on fire. Uh, and and I, was, I, I kind of walked out of the room, and what I saw was a blue light that like lit up the whole house, and it sounded like... And, and that couldn't be good. And so I go running back into the kitchen, and there's smoke just coming out of the microwave, and uh, I open it, and I think like, I'm going to grab this out of the microwave and throw it in the sink. And then I opened it and just froze with my hands up like this. <laughs> My roommate's girlfriend walks in, sees what's happening, and grabs it and throws it at the sink. It kind of bounces. I thought, I thought the thing was just going to hit the floor and burn the whole apartment down. <laughs> Somehow it lands in the sink. We kind of knock it the rest of the way in, soak it with water until it stops burning, and then uh, I had held my head in shame for the rest of the day. <laughs> hey, um, I don't mean to bug you, buddy. You're, you know, we've been such good roommates lately. I don't want to, you know... Um, Jake, that was the weirdest introduction that we've ever... <laughs> I know! I'm still not down with, like, just walking in your room and saying... But I just wanted to... I told of... you, you can come in anytime you I, want. I know. I just kind of wanted to address what, uh, you know, what we're all been thinking about. And that is that the blender is on fire. <laughs> and we're just kind of just, like, breathing it in. And neither of us has, like, put the blender out on fire. It's sure. Just, well, the it's thing like, is... There's, like, like smoke. It's, like, up to our knees. I don't... Or, I don't... no, wait. Up to... It rises. Right? <laughs> 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 so, I don't, I, 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 I'm confused, but, uh, I, I just don't want to, like, I don't want to get logistics about it, but I have the, uh, uh, the contract, and in it specifically, it says, a roommate contract? The roommate agreement, okay. and it specifically says that, um, Hanson is in charge of dishes. Sure. <laughs> so, you don't think the fire concerns, like, you at all? Uh, I think this is more about the principle of the matter. Okay, so you're standing your ground. This is what you're standing your ground on, okay? This is, this is the, I'm, okay, there's someone at the, uh. Yeah, once again, I get dishes, you got. I'll get the door. door. That's how that <laughs> who, who is there? All right. Okay. Hello, how are you? Hey, uh, not so great. We're getting a lot of complaints about smoke at our knees. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> 
It doesn't come with instructions. It doesn't come with instructions. I guess I just kind of thought that when the bonfire, when we started the bonfire, you wouldn't throw all of our new cool toys on it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, and you're right, it's not in the instructions. It's not, okay? <laughs> bonfire, you said, like, I will build a bonfire. Okay, perfect. I think this guy, my friend, he has the instructions for the bonfire. Right? And he said, like, go play with those toys while I start the bonfire. Sure, I'm on it. And you know, like, a lot of eight-year-olds don't get to go camping by themselves. <laughs> so, like, this is a big deal for me. It's a big deal for you, too, right? Uh, our parents say we're very mature. And they say we follow instructions. <laughs> to the letter. To the letter. So when I don't... So he did what? Okay, so he didn't bring the instructions for the toys. <laughs> he brought the bonfire. The no, it's always like, hey, let's go with my toy, let's go with my toy. Yeah, I said, you tell him? I said, I follow instruction. Yes. I'm a responsible yes. eight-year-old. You are. That's what I told you your entire life when you were three. I said, read the instructions before you eat your TV dinner, right there on your table. And I had to wait till I learned to read to have my first <laughs> But in fairness, it's not my fault. It's not my job to put the instructions, new mom. <laughs> Because, like, you're my friend's mom, and now you're married to my dad. <laughs> it wasn't my job to put the instructions on the back of the toys. You do not tell my boy what to do. <laughs> Listen, I heard she was giving your new mom some trouble. <laughs>
talking to her for a minute. Like, just treat her, just treat her. It's like a practice mom for you. When you get back home, you and Gene can do, work, smooth things over. I, 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 I think you might be a little bit too busy with this souffle right now to worry about. Yeah, well, we're in the middle of a cooking we're class. We're in the middle right of now. a cheat on souffle. Okay? Hey, mom, I'm actually in the middle of a cooking class, I guess. I'll call you back in a minute. <laughs> Oh, hi! Oh, hi! Oh my gosh, hi! Okay. Remember what we talked about? Hi! Hi! Um, I tried. Well, uh, welcome. Welcome, I tried. To, uh, welcome to my surprise, my surprise class that I've been uh, working on. I, uh, this is my instructor, Hog Yo. <laughs> Hog Yo. It's so nice to meet you. Yes. Hi. Good to meet you too! Oh, you are as strange, as lovely as you are exotic. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> I will not! Okay. <laughs> so, um, as you know, as you know, um, Hanya has been um, helping me uh, uh, with cooking, and so I actually have made a special. You show us what you got. Oh. Um, you were not watching. Okay. Um, I should get. As you see, the table is already set. So oh, oh, like oh, 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 o
Like hashtag butch. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Great, wonderful. Hashtag bully bully. You, 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 you've seen some action lately bullying an eight-year-old uh, with the uh, body shirt. Yeah. 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 What if we just walked up to everyone we saw and punched them? Yeah. 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 He's got an idea. Yeah. Yeah. We say, hey, do you have the time? How about time for a punch? And then we block. Yeah. It could be more clever. And then after yeah. a punch, we say hashtag yeah. punch. Yeah. 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 Hashtag yeah. punch. It's yeah. this easy. Hashtag punch. Premium bullying. <laughs> oh, they pay a premium. Uh, we give everybody one noogie and then we say, you want another? And say, of course not. Five dollars a month. Okay, <laughs> free trial. Uh, the Netflix uh, trial. system. It's the Netflix it system. You, Mr. Oh. Nervous with the hair. <laughs> I shake my hands when I talk, but it's only because I'm surrounded by killers. <laughs> Boss, I got an idea, and I hope you like it now. <laughs> well, you've built it up pretty high, so if it's not the best damn idea yeah, I've ever heard. We're gonna pull a I'm gonna give you a swirly immediately. I'm God, I hate this guy's face! I hate it! 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 I was thinking, Busta, maybe we get a celebrity endorsement. Oh, I like that. Oh, you like it? After all, after all that, you like the idea? Russell Crowe! Ray Rice! Russell Crowe! He's not a telephone! He's a guy! Russell Crowe. Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen is a good boy. Naomi Campbell. So you can throw a me cell phone. All three of them. We get all three of them. Throw a me cell phone. Are the margaritas done yet? Well, then buy him a friend over. I'm your friend. He's my friend. Can I have a margarita? He wants one. He wants a margarita. Yeah, okay, sure. I just want to say one thing. Who the heck is it? Are you just walking in? <laughs> My son told me to come here! What? For the marks? Come in! Wait! Yeah, I'm just coming in. I don't care. You're a bunch of bullies? Yeah, you like these are bullying? Do you like said bodies to the police? You guys like marks? Get in here! Um, excuse me, yes. Um, I was also. Oh, you're a mom! Mm -hmm. I can just tell by your glow. Yeah. <laughs> show. Some of you guys know are here just about every show. We, we love doing this. We love having, having such a great audience that shows up all the time and, and supports us. We, we hope you had a good time with us. Um, we are, we are, we're done with shows for this year, but we are going to be performing a small amount at uh, the Huge Lightning Comedy Festival. Uh, this is free. That's not, but it's so cheap, guys. It's like 15 bucks. Uh, <laughs> come to it. Uh, it's, uh, it's Friday and Saturday, May 6th and 7th. Uh, come, come, uh, or fifth and six, whatever. <laughs> six and seven. Uh, come watch us uh, next Friday at uh, seven o'clock, probably. Uh, eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, probably. I don't know. Uh, we have at Path Outfitters as well, which is really cool. At Path Outfitters as well, which is really cool. Uh, <laughs> I've got all the beats right here. <laughs> Seriously, guys, thank you so much. We love you so much. Uh, one more time uh, for our four seniors. Next year. I'm Justin. I'm Tucker. I'm Jake, my brother. <laughs>